Well, this is it. This is the Oscar special. It is. Um, we're um, we're we're doing the podcast on location. We were lucky enough to um, get an interview with Harvey Weinstein. Yes, I know. Which we were very excited about. We but, were so excited about it. But we we ended up getting on the wrong plane. Yeah. And we've ended up in Israel. Yes, we're in Mila Kunis right now. No, 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 Khan Yunis. We're just off the. Who's, ga- who's that? It's the place. It's just off the Gaza Strip. It's not quite as bad as you'd imagine it to be, to be honest with Peaceful. you. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite nice and. Um, yeah, not bad. For, I mean, I've never heard of Mila Kunis before. No, it's not Mila Kunis. It's Khan Yunis. Are, are you reading the? Are you reading the? Well, I can read Arabic, and yeah, you can. What, that's what okay. It says, yeah. So anyway. Yes. Let's talk all things Oscars. 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 You talking to me? Did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, who the hell else are you talking? You talking to me? I'm funny how. I'm funny. I'm clown. I'm, I'm Peter Binkley. We all go a little mad sometimes. Man who doesn't spend time in this family can never be a real man. Damn! I'm kind of a big deal. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Join us Sunday night, February 22nd, to celebrate these incredibly incredible artists and films at the Oscars with our host, Neil Patrick Harris. I'm Neil Patrick Harris. I know. What am I doing here? The nominees are? Birdman, or the unexpected virtue of ignorance. Boyhood, the Grand Budapest Hotel, the imitation game. Selma, the theory of everything. Whiplash. See you at the Oscars. All right, so the Academy Awards, um, we watch it every year. Yeah, um, uh, here in Britain, um, you have to stay up quite late to watch it. 2 a.m. usually starts. Yeah, yeah. and it'll finish about, what, 5 in the morning. I'm quite looking forward to seeing what Neil Patrick Harris does hosting it. Yeah, I like him. I like him. You do like him? I do. Yes. He, well, the thing is, he's a very likable personality. He, 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 you know, I think a lot of people don't like him because I don't know why don't I like him? What's what's the problem with him? Is it because he's small? Is he? Because he's gay. Is it? Oh, they're not playing that card. Again. I don't know. I doubt. I don't think. Oh, I don't man. think homophobia is as bad as it as it was now, but. Maybe when we get to your list later on, we might be able to tackle. We never know. I mean, I don't. I don't actually. I, I do not know about the sexual orientation of anybody who's been snubbed. So, yeah. uh, unless we can guess. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's just make it up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man! Don't you just hate that when you get a form and they're asking you? You know, at work, they you want know, to fill out a form, and they want to know your sexual orientation. Who who does it matter what I stick my business into? I always, right, and this is true, I always yeah. stick other. Oh, uh, I do too, I did. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, because fuck you. Yeah, yeah. So it'll be like, you know, um, straight, gay, heterosexual, you know, bisexual, yeah. other. I was like, other. I'm into Whatever. pigeons. Pigeons, <laughs> yeah. Just leave a little bit of blood on the form as well, just to kind of make it even guessing. And, I, and then <laughs> when I sign it at the end, I sign it in my own feces. <laughs> anyway, off to <laughs> talk about feces, right? Well, we've got the best um, picture. <laughs> let's go for best. We're we'll going to start with the big one, yeah. Okay, we'll start with the big one. Yeah, best picture. Right. Um, First of all, who would you like to win, and who do you think will win? Um, yeah, I'd like to see Birdman win because I I, I I watched it and I felt that it was something that stayed with me a lot longer than any of the other films. I, c- I completely agree. One thing with Birdman. Um, do you think it's full of itself? The only people who have critiqued it negatively have said the film's full of itself. I don't think it is at all. But do you think full it's... Full of itself? Yeah. Um, d- With all its arty camera moves and its, it's uh, hyper-stylized. You know, I don't think at all. I don't think it is full I, of itself. I think there are films that are full of themselves. Uh, because Sniper. there are... No, Necessarily, no. In terms of stylistic, yeah, you know, th- right. there was no style in that movie. No. Um, but sty- stylistically, like uh, the film Salt, 
or taken where they're obsessed with the uh, camera style of what looks cool rather than what what's actually being told in the story yeah they get to tell the story really really well uh, the only thing that you know I don't understand how you could have filmed it any other way without being self involved mm. you've got to it's a very self involved film it's well, about self involvement it's exactly the point as well as I was just about to do yeah I'm about to say yeah it's it's about that so how can you not you know, I, I'd say it, that's probably its strength. Let, you know, I think that's why it is so good. Yeah. That it is, you know, you've got to be a little bit pretentious and self-involved to actually get through that film. Yeah. I hope that wins. So Andy and Stephen were using a pencil crayon that we found on the floor next to a, a, a bare foot. And I don't know yeah, I've got a pink one. Yeah, was, yeah. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, A and S. So we're both, we're both for that one. But we're going to use the pink one for the things that are probably going to win. So what do you think is going to win? I do think... I think Birdman might get this. You reckon? You really do? I do. I think Birdman will get best picture. But Boyhood will clean up everything else. Has uh, Boyhood got best director? It will have. Because yeah. I think it will probably get that. Richard Linklater. Uh, direction, yeah. Okay. So it is Linklater. Yeah. Uh, I think he'll get that because it was his effort over 12 years. Yeah, that that kept it going. I mean, not the film itself overall. Maybe when you talk about it, they don't really talk about great performances. They just talk about the fact that it was filmed over twelve years and what an achievement it is. But you don't hear much about. I know, because that is an achievement. You can't take that away from it. But but it's, it doesn't necessarily you... mean that they filmed anything that was good. It doesn't mean it's good. Mm. Um, but then not not a lot of people have actually said, well, are you are you kidding? This took 12 years to make and this is what you've got? No, I haven't heard that yet. There's not been a like, big disappointment, but it's been more... Well, apart from the guys from Red Letter Media. It's, we, they hate it? I think so. The first review they did of it. it was really? So boring and Well, shitty. they can't stop talking about it. They love it. They, they keep on... They, they are so excited about the fact that it took 12 years to make. <laughs> You're telling me they didn't like that film? I'm telling you they didn't like that film. Okay. And I think there might be a sense of <laughs> irony when they've been released in the last few things. You really think? Um, yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, Boyhood, it, it probably... I mean, I, I haven't kind of rushed to go and find it to go and watch it there's mm. nothing that says to me even the, the I watched the trailer I watched all the documentaries I I said nice things to Patricia, Patricia Arquette on Twitter to say good for you, mm. you know, good for you for, for making this kind of a film um, you know but I, I haven't really kind of rushed out to go and watch it I want I was more interested in watching Unbroken yeah which was not nominated um, than I was to watch Boyhood Hmm. Nightcrawler. I would rather watch Nightcrawler than yeah. watch Boyhood. Oh, why was he not? I don't know. We'll get on to that. We'll get on to that. So, yeah, you reckon that Birdman will still clean up? Yeah. I think... Pink crayon. <laughs> and I'm go I'm going to say Boyhood is probably going to get it. Uh, He's going to get it. Boyhood's going to get it. If it's either that or director. Yeah, then I start to look at uh, the, uh, the whole theory of everything and I think that, uh, you know, if Stephen... Hawkins is going to be there at the Oscars like he was at the BAFTAs will people be too afraid not to give it just in case he swears on his machine maybe because he bloody well swore at me when I was in, in Borders in Cambridge yeah I was stacking calendars by the elevator and I didn't realise how wide I was actually stacking them and he couldn't, he, he couldn't get his wheelchair across so I had to quickly clear the calendars while he waited and he said get out of the way I think it was fuckhead or something like that but again, we've spoke about this before. Get I would the fuck out of my way, that was it. I, well, we've talked about this before. This actually happened to Stephen. Because oh. he's apparently got a good sense of humour. I think he might have just bent it, jokingly. Yeah. You know, sarcasm doesn't come across well in text. It does. <laughs> but that's my whole point. I, 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 this is why I cannot stand social media sometimes, because people <laughs> say things, and you, and you could just you could interpret it, interpret it in your own head. And What say. did you think of the theory of everything? It was nice. Mm. And it was it was what you expected for a film like that. And, you know, they didn't really make a huge thing about him. No, they didn't. Because um, they, because his performance is amazing. Sandy Redmayne, is it? Oh, yeah. Eddie Redmayne. Donnie, Donnie Redmayne. Yeah, him. <laughs> but he, he was... Pretty solid. Really good, yeah. Yeah. But then I but, think if, if you actually have access to the guy you're, you're, you're portraying, 
then it, it's a lot easier to kind of you know, you, it, there's a pressure mm. I can imagine that he, he worked with fear to get that performance out of, oh, out of himself absolutely. especially when you've actually got the guy there in front of you watching you doing it but it's a very formulaic film isn't it it's just a, it's just beautiful mind. It's yeah. uh, it's I knew everything that was going to happen, so I'm still t- sticking with Birdman. Yeah, yeah, stick with Birdman. I'm I'm going to say Boyhood because it's one of those movies that doesn't you know, not going to they're not going to they're not going to be suddenly a load of films coming out. <laughs> Think about it, Stephen. The logic and the, the idea of it would be pretty impossible. Next year, all these films suddenly come out and saying, "Oh, it took us fifteen years to, for us to make this." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, no, we should have really tried. Like, well, like, this one took thirteen years. Yeah, yeah, we, beat we wrote it. We wrote years. it last year after 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 hearing about Boyhood. We decided to make a film that took fifteen years yeah. and then release it the year after. <laughs> it's called Girl Hat. <laughs> So, okay, we, I think we're, we're, we're done with the Inber Best Picture. Yeah, okay, I'll okay. stick with Birdman. Best Actor in a Leading Role. Okay, so... Right, we're... I'm going to go with Keaton. Let's, let's read them out first. Okay. okay. So don't don't make right, me just right. like every time about that. Okay. It's one of those things like you said, look, yeah. Well, it's because you end up in Israel, so, you know, just oh, well, don't make any waves. Come on. You, you were the one who took the travel later. I wasn't going to take the travel later. You just took You it. said, it's this gate... So I walked through that gate no, because I said, you are, you no, are I said, far more intelligent than I am. Look, there's Bill Gates, I said. Oh. And you thought I said this gate. So, well, there you go. Anyway, all right, go and read the, just read the song. Uh, well, it's Funny Man Steve Carell. Yes. It's Funny Man Brad Lee Cooper. It's hilarious, hilarious jokes to Benedict Cumberbatch. Um, it's... Uh, C- collective genius and, and uh, honest down to earth dude Michael Keaton we're not biased here at all <laughs> and the uh, new kid on the block Eddie, Eddie Redmayne who did a really good job he did in, in a Formula 8 movie mm. um, that's it yeah 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 so um, I, I am going to go with Keaton Keaton we, we've already talked about Bird, Birdman extensively and about how much we adore him yeah um the other performances, like Steve Carell, is he is really good in yes. that film. But are you always kind of looking at him, thinking, like, stuck? Uh, that's Steve Carell. That's Steve Carell doing that. <laughs> no, I wasn't actually. You actually got lost in his character. Right. I knew something happened at the end, and mm-hmm. I didn't know anything about the story, so oh, yeah. I was kind of in. I was waiting for that. Waiting right for the end. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. I thought the film was really slow. Mm. Completely performance driven. I didn't find it that because when the thing at the end that happens at the end, spoiler alert. He shoots him. Um, I kind of went, oh. But the way it is, it's just like a sort of faraway shot, gets out of his car, bang, 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 shoots his brother, drives credits. off. <laughs> and then the credits roll. Well, yeah, and then he sort of arrests him and all that kind of thing. But it's um, the film was just really slow. And yeah. every performance in it is fantastic. I don't know why, and I'm not disappointed, but because the character that Steve Carell's playing, um, he's, so, he's got this weird sort of disturbing sexual perversion thing about him. I thought something awful like that was going to happen. I'm not no. that I wanted that to happen because it's a true story. I was just expecting it, and then when he just shot yeah. him, I was like, "Which is a, tra- a tragedy and a horrible thing." But the way you was... disappointed that it kind of didn't. I just have thought there was going to be more. That there was nothing else to kind of lead up to. Because this film is so slow and it's heavy. I'll never watch it again. There you go. That's the best way of saying it. It's not a film I will go back to and watch. And Whereas it's... Birdman, I will watch. Yeah. Over and over. Yeah. I will. Yeah. And I, I think that you know it's the same with. Um, you know, American Sniper, Bradley Cooper. I mean, it's not a film I'd watch again. And I found that there's there's nothing happened in that that I haven't seen in a hundred no. movies already about war and done better. And done well. Yeah, it, it was just basically yeah. There's a close up of his eye. He's mumbling something. He's yeah. looking through his scope. There's something happening. Then they get shot and fall to the ground. Yeah, and he's an American hero because he shot a child. But yeah. I kind of wanted to see Spielberg's version because Spielberg bought the rights and he was going to make the film. American Sniper? Yeah. Okay. And he was going to do more about the other sniper and his family and his background. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we only got like a one sided look at this. You know? Yeah. It, war, was, just, it you know, was just insulated about it. It was just all about him. War is relative. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to have it all one sided just seems to have done a, done That's, a, a disservice. And, yeah, and, and it's, it's Clint Eastwood, right? <laughs> Excuse me, yeah. Who's usually Clint a very... He's a poker face director, isn't he? he he's... Well, he, 
Clint Eastwood kind of does different things. I mean, he, he back in, was it 2005, 2006, where he did uh, Letters for Iwo Jima and mm. Flags for My Fathers. He did two sides of the Japanese-American War. And uh, he really played the, you know, really strong hand at showing how, how strong the Japanese were, how difficult it was for them. Um, he's usually, uh, you know, quite an all-rounder when it comes to... I mean, a lot of his old films are Perfect World, Unforgiven. They're kind of all-round things, you know, films where it's not just about the main character who's an antagonist or protagonist or an anti-hero. He uses everybody. But this one, it's just about him. Yeah. Just about him. And there's nothing... I don't feel for anything that, that happens... You know, and it's a horrible thing to say. I don't feel for anything that he, anybody who he shot or him because I just didn't know who they were. Uh, it really was quite forgettable. Yeah. And I didn't feel. You know, usually you kind of feel something. You got you kind of go, oh wow, that. Ooh, you know, you kind of t- you, nothing caught my breath or took my breath away. Well, yeah, we'll talk about feeling stuff. Imitation game. I I did. I I, I yeah. I you really got. Up. I, you did. I, yeah, I, there yeah, were, yeah. There were tears towards the end. Yeah, because he, he had a lot of love about that secret room of his in the Enigma, mm. you know, that, that cupboard. Right? Yeah. Big love for a cupboard. No, <laughs> no there's more to it than that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think um, he won't get the Oscar. He Benedict, won't. no, no, no. He's, he's still too young, and I think well, he's still too... He was brilliant. He was really good in that. Yeah. Again, that film is very formulaic. Yes. It's the theory of everything style of... Yeah. filmmaking but I thought it was better than The Theory of Everything yeah because it's it's um, it's period film and it's it's just kind of telling a, a, a real story again a lot of real stories going on with these uh, performances yeah, yeah. But that's why Birdman stands out because it's it's a, it's an original piece so do you reckon he'll get it he <sighs> Michael Keaton yeah I want to say Michael Keaton is definitely going to yeah. get it and I, and I could, because I, I just think that it's his ear and I think that you know Eddie He's still young. He's got time. Yeah. Um, as with Benedict. Benedict comes the fact they know that he's going to do something outstanding yeah. eventually that's going to be like, oh my God, forget it. This is it. Supporting Next. actor then. Supporting actor. Robert Duvall for The Judge? No. He's Ethan Hawke Mark. for Boyhood. Edward Norton. Mm-hmm. Mark Ruffalo and J.K. Simmons. Right. Yeah. J.K. Simmons is probably going to be one of these um, dark horses that... Um, they don't know where he's come from. They don't know where he's going to go. So I, I think, I think he might get the it. Academy are going to go for J.K. Simmons. Yeah, yeah. Because he's a dark horse, and he's he just doesn't. Seem <laughs> he's like, amazing. He doesn't it? seem like an actor, though. He seems like he is that person. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. then, if you saw him get the BAFTA, mm. he was really sort of tearful and choked up on it. You know what I mean? So you saw the actual J.K. Simmons come out. You know what I mean? He seemed he quite emotional. He reminds me of Chris Cooper, you know, who won uh, for Adaptation. Yeah. Um, playing that um, toothless um, um, orchid thief. Right. He too has this kind of, this, this warmth. J.T. J. T. Walsh has that same kind of warmth, but yeah, he plays such a... Cause, uh, you, cause you've not had a chance to watch Whiplash, have you? But I've seen so many clips of him. Because, he's amazing. He yeah, is. I can, he really is. From what I've seen, it's all been about him, and he. Well, s- the clips I have seen. That's like, the thing. Oh my God. Because the, the the kid in it, who's you know who's trying to be this brilliant drummer, he he's oh, he's okay. Everyone else is okay in it, but mm. he elevates it. I don't think the film is that amazing. No, no, no. You know what I mean? But yeah. J.K. Simmons is. He's a drill sergeant from uh, yes, Full, 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 he's full worse Metal Jacket. Than him. He's worse full, than him. Full Metal Jacket. Worse he's than worse. Him. I'm telling you, there's one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know, one, two, three, four, and he starts to drum. Stop! And try it again. One, two, three, four. And he says, stop, you can't play in time. You're dragging. You're going too slow. One, two, three, four. And he chucks a chair at his head. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Which is... And you haven't done that to your students? Of course, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, but um, <laughs> it comes from the part... They talk about it in the film, I knew about it, but when Charlie Parker, one of his first gigs, yeah. um, the band leader chucked a symbol at his face, and if he hadn't moved, it could have... Sliced it, it could have sliced yeah. him, yeah, you know what I mean? But instead of being the person who thinks, oh, I'm never doing that again, yeah. he went back and practised and practised and practised, and the yeah. next year he went back and played the best sax all you've ever heard in your entire life. That's it. Perseverance. It is. And that's what, this is his, his argument as to he's being that extreme to get the best out of people yeah. but was 
because what happens in it is um, the kid finds out that one of his ex-students has committed, committed suicide. They mm. can't put it on him, but they think it's because he's so, extreme. so extreme. So yeah. he basically does a test. He testifies, and J.K. Simmons gets fired. Because what's amazing about the film, he goes to see J.K. Simmons, you know, the character, obviously, and he see while well, he's just playing piano, he's been fired from, from now. So he, he gets a, he, he meets up with him and they have this talk and he's saying, look, someone ratted me out. I don't know who, but, you know, I'm... Anyway, I'm doing this showcase. The drummer's not quite cutting it. Do you fancy doing it to this kid? And um, he's like, oh. So he decides to do it. Kid gets his dad and everyone else to come. Massive audience. Uh, he puts his part next to him, ready to start. And J.K. Simmons comes up and he just says to the audience, right, um, we're going to start with a slow number. And he says, that's such a song. And the <laughs> drummer has never played that song in his life. Nah. Set him up completely. And you're like, oh my God, what a cock. It's unbelievable. It's just, yeah, you feel for him in just that moment. He comes, he, he just, he walks up to him, he said, oh yeah, just before he announces what song you're doing, he just walks up to him and goes, I fucking knew it was you. Do you no, do you think I'm fucking stupid? I knew it was you. And he walks off and the drums just sat there thinking, oh no. And then obviously he doesn't have the part and embarrasses him. Completely. But the kid walks off stage and then comes back on and just starts playing and makes all the other band and they have to follow him and it's all, it all works out in the end. It all works out in the end, yeah. But yeah, he's brilliant in it. He's really good. I like the title as well, Whiplash. It's a, it's a good title for a film about drumming. It well it's yeah, and it's a Metallica song. It is? Oh, yeah, of course. There you go. Ro I mean Robert Duvall, I mean, he's he's been nominated before. He has won awards before, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think he yeah, has, sure yeah. He has, yeah. Um, he probably just gives a Robert Duvall performance because you know I think with him when you see him in anything you kind of expect him to just be able to do the job and then just get out so. have you just ask me a question have you ever woke up any morning and thought I want to watch The Judge tonight I've I thought about watching it and I didn't yeah I have not watched didn't it didn't really uh, I mean even though it's got both um, Robert, Downey, Robert Jr. Downey Jr. in it and Robert Duvall and I have seen the trailer and it did look strong Mm. Didn't do very well, did it? No, but I think it's because it's just called The Judge. It's a John Grissom title. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really I, bounce. I really thought, I really think Robert Downey Jr., because it's his production company that's yeah. done it, and I think he thought, you know, because he's so popular now. Yeah, it didn't he really thought, matter. Yeah, was, I, this, yeah. Is, this is going to go crazy, and then when it hasn't, he's all of a sudden trying to get a big, bigger part with Marvel again, you know. Yeah, the, do you know what he should have done? He should have got Michael Bay to make the judge to make the judge yeah that could have been you know yeah. <laughs> the judge <laughs> yeah he's, he's, got to, he's got to stand up for his father but he's going to make sure he takes a machine gun in with him to the I'll be, yeah. <laughs> he'll mows down the whole the whole courtroom and then you've he's just been judged <laughs> <laughs> oh shit man ok so we're going with J.K. Simmons yeah because it's worth saying Edward Norton is brilliant again Edward Norton really is great enough. Edward Norton I, we, we've talked about him of course about, yeah, yeah. but he he's very comfortable in this kind of a role yeah so the reason why I didn't say say that he should get the award is because I, I feel as though it, it's he's on familiar territory there and he's it, even though it is brilliant territory to be on for an Edward Norton mm. character and it's it, still Edward Norton and it's Mark Ruffalo role. was really good in that I've um so after watching the film I watched a few documentaries about it and he's the person who was most like the actual person right yeah you know what I mean he, he looks like him he made the effort to all these little act, all these little nuances are just like him so he's really good but he won't get it I think J.K. Simmons will get it yeah it just seems like he's the dark horse that, that has come with this yeah. this middle force and power that uh, you can't shake off we're going to look at the best actress category now and um there was a uh, Marion Cotillard, Cotillard, Marion Cotillard. Marion Cotillard. <laughs> She's got to watch her cholesterol, that girl. Okay, so you tell me who the, who the actresses are. <laughs> Marion Cotillard. <laughs> Cotillard. I don't know. Felicity Jones. Is it French? Marion Cotillard. Let's call that Marion Cotillard. Cotillard. Okay. Yeah, something else. Two days, one night. Uh, Felicity Jones, The Theory of Everything, Julianne Moore, Still Alice, Rosamund Pike, Gone Girl, and Reese Witherspoon for Wild. Yeah, Rosamund Pike. I don't. You see, she is really good in that. She, film. she probably. That's a really good Gone film. Girl was a, was one of those films that I kind of feel as though it's been snubbed. 
Yeah. Um, but we'll we'll go into that a bit later. Um, Marion Cotillard, Cotillard um, I don't know. Um, theory of everything. Yeah, she was she, she was, was sweet. She was good. She, she was sweet. Because yeah. you could argue that the film's more about her than it is about him. Okay. Interesting point of view. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it's all about her. Just it's based on her book. <laughs> Well, not Felicity Jones, yeah. Kind of, it's yeah. her point of view, basically. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yes. Right, still yeah. Alice has not been released here yet, has it? So no, so we haven't seen Julianne Moore, it. but Julianne Moore is, is always a, a good, solid Well, I've heard, a, yeah, I've heard that her performance in that is just extraordinary. Oh, she plays, um, she's got, what has she got? The, is it like a multi neuron disease? She, I, think? I thought she had Alzheimer's. Or Parkinson's. It's like a, a form of form Alzheimer's. Form of Alzheimer's, and yeah. uh, she's just struggling. So anything like that, the Academy kind of gravitates towards people who have uh, are, 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 are struggling with adversity. Yeah. They like that kind of thing. You just remind me of um, that scene in Tropic Thunder. <laughs> when um, <laughs> you went full retard. You never go full retard. Because <laughs> he didn't win the Oscar. And yeah. they're saying that you never go full retard to win the Oscar. You always no. gotta have the... Anyway, sorry. You've got to have a mix. you got to have a blending of that's, retard. That's yeah. such a funny Robert, Robert Downey Jr. performance, that full. He was, I, nomin- he was nominated for that as well, wasn't he? I, th- I think he and was, that's, yeah. That's the um, great thing. I mean, some sometimes actors get to have fun and be nominated as well. Yeah, he can eat it. Because yeah. that whole performance is having a dig at... Hollywood character, you yeah. know, performers who, you know, he actually dyed his skin black to. It's the same with this, the, yeah, to yeah, do yeah. this role and yeah. And then the same joke was kind of reiterated in, in Bowfinger with uh, Eddie Murphy, who says, you know, I, I no nobody who's black or re, you know, I've got to be a black slave, a retarded slave, in order to get an Academy yeah, Award. It. That was yeah. it. Uh, excuse the word retard, guys. It's it is used in context. Well, I think Reese Witherspoon's going to get. You reckon Reese Witherspoon? Yeah. She, she, she get she got the best supporting actress for um, What the Line, didn't she? She did, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think she she's so you get these actresses who come along and do the supporting and then do the best actress. Kate Winslet did that one, so yeah. I think you're probably right there. But she's she's amazing. It's really good, really sort of brave performance. It is, yeah, and I think she delivers it well. I mean, it's got her own. Uh, it's just got her own staple. It is her movie. Yeah, there's you know, it's it's with her all the way. I kind of, I was a bit fearful watching it because I thought it was going to be really heavy on the molestation and kind of nasty things that were going to happen to her. Yeah, but it's not so. I know it was just a journey. Yeah, and um, and I love yeah. the way it ends. She finishes the journey, and the film ends. You don't get anything. The film is literally about she starts. She, she, you get flashbacks to stuff yeah. she remembered, like the drugs and the, you know, the, yes. you know the, lots of sex and stuff. But um, she starts, and by the time she just crosses that bridge, she's finished the journey. Yeah, the film mm-hmm. ends. That's all it's about. That's all and, it's know. about the, the men who pick her up in the car and uh, yeah, take and her to their different homes. Yeah, and, and she's doing drugs with them and stuff, and yeah. she's married as well while she's doing all these things. Which is, yeah. Naughty girl. Bad girl. And, uh, Slap yeah. that fat but, ass. <laughs> but it's Reese with, with Witherspoon and she's adorable. Like, you know, even when she is playing characters who are just kind That's of... That's why I mean it's so brave of her. Yeah. You know what it's, I mean? it, it's, like, it's like she just disappeared for a while and, and went into the wilderness just to have a, a, a break from being Reese Witherspoon. Mm. You know, it's nice to have that, you know. And to actually be there with her, watching her doing it. <laughs> you know? It's like, I'm not going to do any comedies for a while. I'm going to do this and that. And, yeah, I think she's she's diverse. She is. Yeah. Okay, best supporting actress. What have we got? We've got Patricia Arquette. We've got Laura Dernan, who was also in Wild. She hasn't been nominated since probably 1992. Um, Kira Knightley and Emma Stone. Okay, right. so we've got... okay I think Patricia Arquette's going to get it. She, I think she's going to get it too. Um, everybody loves Patricia Arquette. Stephen Fry called her Rosanna Arquette at the uh, BAFTAs. Uh, but, you know, you know it, it, her look on her face, it was quite hilarious. Yeah. She just looked at her husband and went, okay, <laughs> that happened. Um, so, I've had yeah. a massive thing with Patricia Arquette ever since Lost Highway. Do you know what? Yeah, for me, yeah. it was true romance. Was it? Lost Highway. Yeah, I mean, I showed, I showed Catherine the, the, the video clips of her. Um, her monologues and, and true romance. She's, she goes, she's, a, she's got such a delicate voice, and I love her medium. And I like Patricia Arquette. I do very much. And I, I, you know, I would work with her any day. Excuse me, because you know that she. <laughs> I, I picked up one of those colds that you get. In. Airports. Yeah. SARS. Are you sure it's not SARS? An Israeli cold. It is really cold. The worst kind of cold you can have. Yeah. 
You could have built like a steel machine to get one of them through one of those bad boys. <laughs> and uh, she she did this film for twelve years, you know. Just well, like Ethan Hawke, she did this film for well, maybe longer. I don't know. I mean, the, it took them twelve years to make. I think she should just go for another twelve years now. <laughs> That's the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. 20, yeah, let's get the middle. Let's years. just call it middlehood. Middlehood. <laughs> yeah. Why should I care about this boy's life, hood? Yeah, like who gives a shit anymore? Hood? So yeah, but <laughs> is there anything to talk about with the others? Um, Kira well, and I, they could have any actress could have done what she did in that film. I don't know why she's been. No, exactly, and, and this is this is what it, why it bothers me. I mean, I don't, I don't rate. I mean, she kind of reminds me of Winona Ryder in Little Women. Yeah. Uh, when she was nominated for that, and it was just like she was able to to be swoony and and give di- good dialogue that's kind of written in a very dramatic and emotional, sentimental way, and that's kind of it. I don't really see that yeah. as a as a you know. I think Emma Stone was really good in Birdman as well. Yeah, I I, I I remember I had a bit of trouble with her. Yeah, but, you uh, did, yeah. But I think that's probably because the character conflict, the conflict of personalities. I think. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, we forgot, we forgot to mention... I wasn't going to mention it, because it didn't deserve it. <laughs> yeah, we forgot to mention Meryl, because we just turned the page, and right at the top of the page is the, is Meryl Streep, who was nominated also for Best Supporting Actress. I think we should revisit, hang on, Best Supporting Actress, and, and make a decision here. Are we sure we're actually happy with Patricia Arquette? I'm very happy to, with Patricia do Arquette. We, do we want to give Meryl Streep... I don't want to give Meryl Streep anything for that film. <laughs> What was it? Into the all into the, into woods. the woods. Yeah. Which one was she? She was the witch. <laughs> okay, next. It'd be funny if she wasn't. <laughs> it's not big and it's not clever. <laughs> we've got just open uh, a door, William. Do you know what we've got? Yeah. Just, just, why do you have to destroy me? Um, best animated feature. Okay. Best feature that is animated. So we've got Big Hero Six. The Box Trolls, How to Train Your Dragon 2, Song of the Sea, and The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. Kagu- Kaguya. Kaguya. Something Japanese. Kaguya. Right, I've seen oh. most of them. Have you? Yes. I have a five-year-old child. Damn it. This is what I need. Right, Box Trolls child. is really good. Yes. Um, I think you're going to take the lead on this one. Okay, Big Hero, Hero 6 is really good. Really good. It's based in a place called uh, San Fran, G- San Fran Inese or something like that. It's, it's San like Fran a, Inese. a amalgamation of Jap- Japan and so. Is it basically about uh, AI? It's really touching film. Yeah. Yeah. The main, the, well, like the Wall-E ro- kind of a. Well, no, the robot is. It deals with loss. Like, I mean, this kid who's like this genius has lost his parents at an early age. And he loses his brother very uh, within the film, so it deals with really tough, tough subject matter. Yeah, but in a really, really good way. And this, the the robot thing, it's this big white. It's just it's like a really sweet, innocent character. Gotcha. It's a, a. Is it Pixar? No, it's, it's Disney. Of course is it, it is. Disney? Of course, it's Disney. Is it Disney? And only of these Pixar? Um, I'm not sure to be honest, but yeah. I would go between either Big Hero 6 or How to Drain Your Dragon 2 because they are also fantastic films the How to Train Your Dragon films they are brilliant and the actual main dragon in that is genuinely quite scary I mean yeah I mean it rivals anything that was out of The Hobbit it really does beats anything out of um, Harry Potter as well oh yeah yeah Yeah. so yeah okay I'm going to go with but I think Big Big Hero Hero 6 6. I'm going to go for Big Hero 6 that's Big A for Big Hero 6 um, okay, so the next one is, uh, oh, do you know what, is it, uh, cinematography? Yeah, it's very faint text and it's uh, printed on, uh, on Israeli paper. Yeah. yeah. So, we've got Birdman. Birdman cinematography, um, by Emmanuel Lubeski, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, Robert Yaleman, Ida, Ida? Huh? Mr. Turner, uh, Lucas, and yeah, blah, blah 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 blah. Mr. Turner and Unbroken, Roger Deakins. Now, because I've only, I, I mean, I've seen Grand Budapest Hotel, um, and it's, it's like a, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a painting on every shot. It's, yeah, it's which of, is 
but then kind of what it's supposed to look like yeah I, I think it's a really good film I love it's that a film. really good film it's yeah. quite funny love, I love the humour and there, there are things in that film that kind of like ah oh, I wish I, why why didn't they do that gag why didn't they do that gag yeah it's because they want me to sit here and go why didn't you do exactly. that gag yeah you're yeah. killing me why didn't you drink the wine why didn't you drink his wine <laughs> in that train why did he sit there with a full glass why didn't he just reach over and drink his wine I'm um, sorry I'm fine but I'm going <laughs> go with Unbroken because I really really enjoyed uh, watching the visuals in Unbroken um, right, okay. and I kind of I kind of feel as though that maybe Grand Budapest Hotel is, is stylistic yeah well I'm going to go with Birdman I think the cinematographer and cinematography in that is staggering it is it is and I've not seen Unbroken so I can't do anything but speculate on that <laughs> yeah I just I just think that um I, I forgot that Birdman was on there. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long title. It wasn't just Birdman. Yeah, I think I think Birdman is gonna is gonna get it. But I did I did, I do want to kind of like nod to uh, Unbroken for being. You know, it's Roger Deakins. He does a good mm. job. You know. Is that the Angelina Jolie? It is. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's just if it, you can smell the old paper. Right. That's all I can, I can smell the burning, you can smell the sweat, the blood and the tears, and I think that that's, you know, partly visual, you know, it's a visual thing. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay, next. Very cool. Um, um, so costume, you got Grand Budapest Hotel, um, you got Inherent Vice, Into the Woods, Maleficent, and Mr. Turner. We don't even know about Mr. Turner. What is Mr. Turner? Um, it's about... Um, it's Timothy Spools. What's I should know what it's about because Mark Hermo loves this film and talks about it. Yeah, right, he's an exploration of the last quarter century of the great, if eccentric, British painter J. M. W. Oh. Turner's life. But yeah, apparently he's, he's just he's amazing in it. But but because nobody knows who Mr. Turner is, they kind of just thought that ah, whatever. Yeah, I don't think it's going to win best cos best costume costume. No. Yeah. Right, I think the Grand Budapest Hotel should get it. I think Into the Woods is going to get it. Oh, shit. No. I think so. Okay, so I think it's directing. Yes, it is. Best director. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to get this, get the thing on here just in case I really can't see it. Uh, so who, who, who have we got there? Right, so we've got Birdman, which is a man who directed that. A man? <laughs> Do you want to run it, have a run it? Oh, uh, Mexican director Alfa Rango. We've got Boyhood, which is later. Uh, Foxcatcher, Grand Budapest Hotel, and The Imitation Game. I right. think... I'd like Birdman. I, I'd like Birdman to win. I think Boyhood's going to get it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, directing? Yeah, because it's Link Ladder. Yeah, I like him. I, th- I think he probably he, he's probably going to deserve that more than anybody else is going to deserve anything. Yeah, just to, to have managed to get a cast of people who'll stay around for twelve years, and yeah. film a few hours every. It does. It does make you wonder how you know how he actually managed to keep them staying. You know, it must have had a, you know p- periods of time where they said, "I can't do it this week." <laughs> oh no! What are we going to do? Yeah. But, you know, it's like that's a week. We're going to lose a week. <laughs> Damn it! I can't. You know, uh, I'm sure they'll be fine. Okay, so <laughs> um, we're gonna are we gonna talk Best about documentary? Document- okay, well we've got Citizen Four, Finding Vivian Meyer, Last, Last Days, Days in, in Vietnam, Vietnam, The Salt of the Earth, or Virunga. What sounds? I, I mean, I would th- like Citizen Four to win. That's about Edward Snowden and him releasing the NSA files. I seriously doubt. Yeah. They'd let it, that win, but it's quite a. Um, yeah, a know. brave thing for them to to do if they did. Yeah, it's kind of like... quite an achievement in that film, and you know, as we sort of allude to quite a lot when we're doing podcasts, I'm kind of obsessed with this kind of conspiracy thing. Yeah, yeah, and well, it's not a conspiracy because it happened. You know what I mean? The uh, NSA were holding on to all this information, and he, was, Edward Snowden, was working for them. Yeah, I yeah. thought this isn't right. So we released it all to the Guardian. The Guardian put it all out. That's it. Yeah, I think so that's it's a yeah. documentary about him. I'd say, I'd say that'd be worth watching, definitely. Mm. Should we just skip foreign language films? Yeah, not to be nasty. Not to be nasty, but we don't get to see them. This is the problem. Okay, let's talk about foreign language films. We just don't get to see them over here. No. We we, we will probably see them on Channel 4 in about two years' time. Mm. 
and then we'll be able to say if every now and then, like if you're lucky enough to be able to spend the time the corner house in Manchester will show these films yes that's, that's where I got to watch Pan's mm. Labyrinth you know um, and they are brilliant probably, probably the best cinema around without question so film editing sorry okay so we've got American Sniper yes Boyhood The Grand Budapest Hotel The Imitation Game Whiplash do you know there's a film that's missing from this list that what? I thought was that we, we, we noted about its editing quite strongly because we didn't know where things started and ended and I think yeah. that's always a skill um, yeah so Birdman Birdman missing from this list which that's, that's strange and I think they could have taken American Sniper off this because I think it, I don't think it was uh, anything special no absolutely not Boyhood again you got 12 years of footage there to edit <laughs> But it's not going to be any harder than editing a film. No, exactly. I mean, if, I mean, how much footage did they have per year to make twelve? I mean, if it was ten minutes per year, that's yeah. pretty easy. I could have done that. Yeah, I could have. I could have edited something in. in the... Now, the Grand Budapest okay. Hotel, however, editing is fantastic. Yes, that's very well made because it's very uh, non-linear and yeah. And, 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 yeah. Imitation game. I, what? I, I never noticed anything great about the editing in that. Whiplash no. has music involved, and music and editing is often quite a. This is tricky part of my issue I had with Whiplash because obviously the kid, the one, the guy who's playing the drums, he, he clearly had learned how to play the drums and he was holding the sticks correctly. But every now and again, you did his fill and he didn't do it. Bad editing. Ah, bad editing. You know what I mean? When you hear this like little yeah, tom yeah, yeah. roll, <laughs> and, he's well, not, there's, there's and, he, and he's not done it. He's still just playing on the on his hi hats and the snare. You're thinking, well, you shouldn't really have done that. So, Maybe he had an iPad in GarageBand on his lap. He might have done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're going to go with Grand Budapest Hotel. Yes, but I think Boyhood will get it. But you think Boyhood will get it because... You edited it over 12 years, man! It took me 12 years. That's like 10 minutes a year. Oh. That's just ridiculous. How can anyone keep up with such work? <laughs> it's like 10 minutes a year. Oh, boy. Okay, next. Okay, so foreign language film was... Was that... No, that wasn't foreign language film. Uh, that's songs. Oh, songs. So this is all mixed up. So are so we on to um, uh, hairstyling? Hairstyling. Hairstyling. So Foxcatcher, Grand Budapest Hotel, or Guardians of the Galaxy? It should be Guardians of the Galaxy because they haven't been. They've been snubbed quite well, a they lot. So. They have. created different races of people <laughs> in that film. So exactly. that's quite an achievement. Yeah. But I mean, anybody, anybody can give you a, a, a Barbara Hershey bob or a, or a Mia Farrow haircut. Yeah. You know, anybody can do little Superman curls yeah. that any other human being would possibly have. So yeah, going to the galaxy because it's got an alien. But do you think that will win it? Mm, no, just, I think it's going to be Foxcatcher. I think so too. Because everybody can't believe that that's Steve Carell. Yeah, in the exactly. costume. So, so. I'm a little Foxcatcher. Yeah, Foxcatcher. Because they've got to give them something. Yeah. You know, they don't want to get. They don't go sweep through every award. Music, original score. Grand Budapest Hotel, Alexandre de, de Blatt. De Blatt. We've got the Imitation Game, Alexandre de Blatt. Uh, Interstellar, Hans Zimmer. Zimmer. Nice to see him there again. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Turner, Gary Yeshon. And the Theory of Everything. Johan Johansson. Well, I actually, I particularly like the score to Interstellar. <laughs> I love the score. I've listened to it several times. Yeah. It was the it was the score of my year. I'd yeah. say. For that. And when like the the spinny ship is going past Saturn and it sort of takes spinny you, ship. Yeah, and it takes you it genuinely, it genuinely took my breath away. And the music behind it helped with that. So I would go with Interstellar, yeah. which has been snubbed at um, the Oscars. Horribly, so I'd like yeah. him to win at least something. Yeah, Alexander Desplat. I mean, he's, he's De Blatt, He's uh, he did Godzilla earlier in the year as well. So he makes he's done a lot of scores this year. Yeah, right. Best okay, original music. song. Yay! Everything is awesome from the Lego Movie. Well, another show. snubbed movie. Yeah, um, considering it was an animated feature, it didn't get a look in, and it's been the most popular um, animated feature of this year. Um, Glory for Selma. Yeah, Selma. Yeah. Another one of those things that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, Grateful, Beyond the Lights, Diane Warren, uh, I'm Not Gonna Miss You, by, from Glenn, pa Glenn, Glenn Campbell. As they always bring somebody from the past, you know, Glenn Campbell this time. Well, yeah. well, sometimes it's either Bob Dylan or or um, many, many, <laughs> many other um, 
um, old, older, well-known musicians. Um, yeah, Annie Lennox. Um, Lost Stars from Begin Again. Um, right, I would like Everything Is Awesome from the Lego Movie to win because I just, that song's just brilliant. But I reckon is it, is it this year's happy song? No, I don't think so. Because everything is awesome. Everything is good cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's, it does a good feel. Yeah. Well, they have this in the credits at the end. Yeah, you have like two versions of the song. You must live in the cinema. I do. Wow. But nothing else do, I? So, um, but I think they'll probably give it to Glory from some because they should give it something. They have to. I mean, another well, snubbed film. Another snubbed film, and and controversially snubbed film. Production design. We got um, yeah, we got we got a few we got a few films. Grand Budapest Hotel, Buda, Budapest, um, Imitation Game, Interstellar, Into the Woods, and Mr. Turner. Production design. Interstellar. Yeah, it's gotta it, be. It's gotta be. I love space. Space. I mean, it's it's yeah. it's amazing stuff. It's, but, it's, some people say it's the final frontier. But they also um, Interstellar. Um, Nolan made it a purpose to not have just green screen and CGI. Mm. So the pro- production design was actually production design. It was like the set on Alien. You know, it was actually a physical set that they can actually go into and, and immerse themselves in. So mm. um, <laughs> we're not seeing any of the short films. So we can just skip those. Sound editing, sound mixing. I mean, really, yeah. So let's go to uh, sound editing then. Um, American Sniper, Birdman, The Hobbit, Interstellar, and Unbroken. Again, I'd go with Interstellar. Yeah, mm. although I like Birdman because of the, I think that I think that'd be more of a mixing think, thing. I yeah, think, but yeah. I think sound editing. Yeah, editing. I think Interstellar. Yeah. Yeah, but mixing go with Birdman. Yeah, because I don't think Interstellar was mixed as well. Because I I thought there was a couple of times where I felt as though that the music was a little bit too obnoxious. Right. Um, but the Birdman, the music actually pl- worked with the film mm. and it was actually a character in the film as well that that, that drumming was yeah. spiritually all over the place yeah especially yeah okay um, so, so yeah. sound mixing we'll give it to Birdman sound editing Interstellar Interstellar okay, okay. visual effects right. now this is an interesting one because there there are no this is the only time where um, yeah so we've Marvel got Marvel Films Academy Awards so we've got visual effects. yeah Captain America The Winter Soldier yeah Dawn of the Planet of the Apes Guardians, Guardians of, of the, the Galaxy, Galaxy. Interstellar, Interstellar and X Men: Days of Future Past. Is that, right, is that the porn film? That is. That's the into Inter- stellar. Into stellar visual effects. Wow, yeah. they must have. Because you literally the camera went into Stella. <laughs> right, you know what I want to win. I want Guardians of the Galaxy to win because you want Guardians of the Galaxy. I mean, the effects in that film. A lot going on. A lot going on. Whereas Interstellar was kind of was was grand scale. Operatic, yeah. thematic, but didn't really have the depth. But I that think God the, in the galaxy. they'll go with Dawn of the Planet of the Apes because it's because those monkeys look so real. Because of the motion capture, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's talked about how incredible it is, but I think Guardians should win it. I think we should because have because that film yeah. is just so good it on so many different levels, and we should have a marathon of the Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, the the, the, the Planet of the Apes marathon, yeah. all the originals and all the remakes. Let's do it. Let's, yeah. let's do it now. <laughs> once we get back from Israel. Yeah, once we get back. No, no, no I think they'll, have, they'll show it down the road. Oh, do they? No. Um, the writing. We love writing. Yes. So. Um, so adaptive screenplay, we've got American Sniper, The Imitation Game, Inherent Vice, The Theory of Everything, and Whiplash. These are all from original, uh, from adapted uh, works. Right. That's a tricky one. I don't want American Sniper to win. No. Yeah. Why is that? I said I don't. Well, it's because I don't like the film, but I don't know. I've, I've never read the. Was screenplay. it was it well written though? I mean, should it have even been nominated for writing? I don't think it. I don't no. think there was anything in the writing that was clever, or big, or or different. Um, Inherent Vice was really too full on. Yeah, you. I don't know what that film. Was yeah, about. I have no idea. I think I know that. Yeah, that's kind of the point. And the um, the author who wrote the original one, that's the, how he writes, you know, we have no idea what's going on in these yeah, books. And but, people either hate it or love it. So. But it doesn't really make for entertainment when you have to really, really remember everything and write yeah. things down. You don't need a note taker when you go to the cinema. I'm, I reckon the theory of everything or Whiplash is, is going to take this one. Yeah. I would like the imitation game to win something. 
Yeah. It should win something. Writing. Writing. Is it? Was it well written? Yeah. I think it was well written. Yeah. Okay, so let's 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 split it. But I reckon they'll give it It'll to be... the theory of everything. Yeah. Especially if Hawkins is there. Okay, so the original screenplay we've got Birdman, Boyhood, which took twelve years to write as well. Did it? As, on top of the twelve years to to make. Um, Foxcatcher, The Grand Budapest Hotel, Night Crawler. They remembered it was made. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> but for writing, I I really, 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 really like Nightcrawler. Yeah. Even though I really, 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 really like Birdman too. Uh, I don't care for for Boyhood, Foxcatcher, or Grand Budapest Hotel when you've got these two in this category together. Mm. Yeah. What would your money be on Birdman or Nightcrawler? I, I think Birdman will get it because Nightcrawler has just been shoved off the face of the earth for no reason. Yeah. Um. So I think Birdman will get it. Okay. I and that's that. it. And that's those are all the nominations. Yes. Uh, make it as you will. Um. It's, it, it's always a surprise every year when you see all the nominations and you, you kind of see all these films that you think, I'm never going to see these films. Mm. We've really made an effort to watch as many as we can. We have. Um, I'm completely broke now. I can't believe that we've got to reschedule a flight back to England from Israel now. So we, we have no money, more money to watch any films for the next year. So I don't know what we're going to do about this show, man. I think we'll just sneak into cinemas. Should we do the sneaking? Just thing? sneak in, yeah. And then just review it while we're watching it. Yeah. Let's do that. That's the end of part one of the Oscar special. Join us in part two, where we talk about snubs and stakes and other trivia relating to the Oscars or not. So please just continue to follow us uh, on the Facebook group, um, Frame by Frame 78. Just just search for us in that search bar. Um, subscribe to the YouTube channel on uh, SR5SE, or just type in Roasted Portions, all one word. You can also listen to us on SoundCloud, Frame by Frame number two. Um, or you can, if, you, if you're struggling to type all these things into your... Uh, into your bar then uh, just go to roastedportions.com and uh, there'll be links all over the place uh, pertaining to all these different areas and if you want to catch up with us on Twitter then go to frame by frame 78 that's all from me and now you can wait for part two okay yep yeah. it's gonna start in a few moments if you've got it on autoplay no? Well then just stop the recording. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop!